allow me to paint a scenario for you. You're determined to be the best that you can be, not just for yourself, but for others. As fate would have it, you discover your passion, the thing that you do better than anyone else you know. You're scared to death to take the risk, but you muster up your inner courage and go on after your dream with everything you've got in you. There's ups and there's downs. You fall and you get up, sometimes many times over. But because this is your thing and no one else does it like you do, and because you're giving it your all, something special happens. Now, let's say this scenario isn't a figment of my creative imagination. Let's say it's the real life story of someone you know. My conversation with Lisa Price was inspiring, challenging, empowering, encouraging, all at the same time. And of course, the fact that I love her products makes the discussion even more meaningful for me. She's been featured on some of the top television networks out there. Lifestyle magazines such as Essence fly off the shelves when she's mentioned. Oprah Winfrey swears by her foot lotion. And Grammy Award winning pop star Mary J. Blige and actor-director Jada Pinkett Smith can't stop talking about her almond cookie. In 1993, Lisa Price launched Carol's Daughter, an assortment of nature-inspired beauty products created with you and I in mind. Starting in her own kitchen, Lisa worked her way into a multi-million dollar company with stores in Brooklyn, Harlem, New York, and an enviable nationwide distribution network. This is her amazing and inspiring story. Well, it, it actually started with me making fragrances first. And that began from um, reading an article about Prince um, and finding out that he had a fragrance bar on his bureau and he would blend different fragrances on his body and that would be the scent that he would wear that day. So he'd create something different every day. And I thought that was a really cool idea. And I started to blend different oils together to make my own scents. And in order for a fragrance to really last, you should layer it. You should moisturize with it, cleanse with it, and then mm. spray it on. So I wanted to be able to do that. So I needed to have those fragrances in products. So that led me to creating products and I was really doing it for myself yeah. and, you know, had a lot of fun doing it, getting to wear all these different combinations whenever I wanted. And then I started to make gifts for friends and family. And my mother actually encouraged me to sell at a church flea market 18 years ago. Wow. And that was the beginning of Carol's Daughter becoming a brand. And now uh, to be the face of a brand, to be you know where we are but you know I'm still learning like I, I always look at myself as a work in progress um, but I'm very appreciative of it because if I hadn't been thrust into this I don't think I would have learned the things that I've learned or gotten as comfortable with so many different things so it's really made me a better more well-rounded person and a more confident person. So how does one figure out what they're meant to do with their life? I've had this conversation with people that I look up to, people who appear to have figured it out and the answer is usually rooted in finding what your real passion, your real talent is. For Lisa, it was a love for fragrances and a passion for cooking. Her natural instincts and the motivation to solve for her real life hair and skin problems were her driving force. These combined with lots of experimentation and the often unexpected accident in the kitchen led her to her thing. All natural, essential oil-based, organic body and spirit care concoctions designed with you and I in mind. Well, Carol's daughter is who I am. My mom's name was Carol and I'm Carol's daughter. Um, and when I was trying to think of a name for the company, I made a list of things that I was and things that I wanted to become. And I figured if I pick from the list of things that I am, then I'll be affirming something great about myself. And if I pick from what I want to become, I'll be calling into being this thing that I want to be. I love that. And when I said the names, uh, Carol's daughter, there was just something about it that felt right. I just got goosebumps when I said it. Yeah. It just allows her to just live on and I love that. Well, initially I started out making fragrances and body care because 
fragrance was my passion. Yes. And then when I first started to sell at flea markets, women would come over to my table and they would ask me, well, what do you have for hair? I need something to make my hair soft. I need a new shampoo. I need a conditioner. And I didn't have hair care products. And when I said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have hair care products, I couldn't get them to stay and try the moisturizers. Mm. So I, I realized very quickly that I needed to learn how to make hair care so that I could at least get them to stay at the table. So I started out with the Coretamin hair oil. Um, it was the easiest thing for me to figure out first with just getting into hair care. And then from there, I made the healthy hair butter, the mimosa hair honey, and in time, the shampoos came and the conditioners came because I just had to learn how to do it. And I had lots of trial and error and you know, exploding bottles of shampoo and lovely things like that. And I've avoided ingredients that I don't have to use in order to deliver a great product. So any synthetic ingredients that we may use, we use them because it keeps the product safe or it helps it to perform better. But wherever possible, I supplement it with something natural and good for you so, it's, yeah. so that the product is just not filled with junk. Because I want to deliver efficacy, but at the same time, I just want the product to be as good for you as possible. Everyone has a story. The big question that was going through my mind before I sat down with Lisa was, how in the world did this young woman in serious financial straits, unable to get a business loan and deeply in debt, create a multi-million dollar enterprise? The answer might be surprising. With a mere $100 in cash, some ingenuity and the notion that we should follow our hearts to do the thing that we truly have a passion for. In her book, Success Never Smelled So Sweet, How I Followed My Nose and Found My Passion, Lisa shares the details of her incredible journey, how she went from bankruptcy to grossing millions of dollars a year, all the while working from her home, being a mom and a wife, doing the thing that she absolutely loved. But as our most great success stories, the journey was not without its challenges. What do you think, uh, based on your experience, was the toughest or most challenging aspect of that growth process that you just described? Staying out of my own way, not letting my insecurities and my fears of doing things get in the way of the company moving forward or me moving forward or allowing the fact that I felt like someone knows better than me mm. to affect a decision that I make. And some, some things can be really silly, you know, like, the first time that I had to do live television, um, I did The View, and I was terrified. Just, I mean, just absolutely terrified. What was it, being in front of people? What, what was it? The was fact it the that it was live, yeah. that, that I couldn't stop and fix something if I made a mistake. I was used to doing television somewhat at that point, but I always knew in the back of my mind, well, if I say something really terrible or if I mess up really badly, they can stop and I sure. can do it over. And right before I did it, there was just that feeling of, you know they can't stop. So if you mess up, like, that's it. And so I was very, very afraid. And I remember telling my husband before I went on, I said, I don't, I don't think I can do it. I really don't think I can do it. And he says, well, you know, you can go home whenever you want to go home. He said, but... The kids are at home watching, you know, waiting to see mom. And More pressure. The whole oh, staff, no. <laughs> the whole staff is there waiting. But if, if you really, but he knew what he was saying. He, sure. You know, he knew he was saying the right thing to me. And you know, so I realized I was like, wow, they're all counting on me, and I'm just letting this nervousness get in the way. And I did it, and it went by so fast. Yeah. You know, it was like the quickest six minutes of my life it just flew by and before I knew it it was over and then I had gotten past that fear it's like okay I've done live television I can do this again because yes. I survived and now I do two-hour shows on Home Shopping Network and I don't even think about it isn't know? it interesting too how those types of experiences reveal something about yourself that is actually a strength and a, and a, qual a positive quality about yeah. you I've learned that the more uncomfortable I am the better it's going to be for me in the long run the more outside of my comfort zone something puts me I know that it means I'm going to grow yes. and something good is going to come of it it's an invaluable lesson of life that behind the majority of great successes are tales of steep learning curves tough sacrifices and costly prices that were paid 
Lisa knows this all too well, having had to face off deep-seated issues revolving around money and struggles with low self-esteem. It doesn't matter who you are or who you know. Chasing your destiny more often than not forces you to operate outside of your comfort zone. Those that succeed are those that learn how to deal with it, pressing forward amidst the fear in spite of their inadequacies, regardless of any history or failure. Talking to Lisa, all I could feel was this calm sense of self-awareness. She's very grounded, very clear about who she is and what it takes to fulfill her purpose. She's not afraid of hard work and not afraid of going for it with all her might. The self-esteem issues I felt at different times in my life and for different reasons. So sometimes I felt uncomfortable because I was overweight for most of my life. And I'm still technically an overweight person, but I'm 95 pounds lighter than I was a couple of years you ago. You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. You really do. Thank you. Um, but, I, but before I even lost the 95 pounds, I had to kind of like get over that feeling that I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Um, and having to do photo shoots and television shows and speaking engagements and things like that helped with that. And the fact that people accepted me just for who I was and for the brand helped me get past that feeling that I wasn't good enough. When I look in the mirror now, I can see how I feel. And so it, it matches now. Yeah. But I think it, it's important and I treasure it more because I accepted who I was before. Not that I was fully satisfied and happy, but I accepted this is who I am. Yeah. You know, this is what I look like, this is who I am. And maybe one day I'll look different and I'll feel better. But for right now, this is this is me and I have to love who I am. You know, I, I'm just, I'm learning that lesson. In this past year, I just had a baby six months ago. Mm -hmm. And you know, the types of changes your body goes through. Oh yeah. And, um, and exa I uh, just being in those, especially when you're in front of the camera all the time, you're under such scrutiny, the importance of valuing and appreciating how you look regardless of what stage you yeah. are in yeah. the journey is so, so important. And if you really feel it on the inside, it radiates. It does on the outside. It does. The whole thought of being on her show yes. and then actually doing her show was just a turning point and it was amazing. You know, I remember getting the phone call that, you know, someone from the Oprah Winfrey show had called my store and, you know, me getting the number and calling them and, you know, two days later the crew is at my house and then that same day I find out that I'm going to, you know, Chicago to tape the show and meeting her and taking a picture with her. I mean, the whole thing was just phenomenal and um, I'm extremely proud that I can look back and, you know, now that the show is coming to a close, that I, I did that, you know, like I, I said, and, and I used to say it as a joke, you know, I used to say, well, you know, when Oprah calls, well, you know, when I go on the Oprah Winfrey show, <laughs> and I was saying, what you put out there, exactly, and but I was saying it like, you know, I want to call it into being, but it's probably not ever going to happen, right. but, you know, and it was just, you know, a running joke, well, you know, when Carol's daughter goes on Oprah, that's just going to be it, it's fabulous to have done it, you know, to, to be a part of that part of our history. And I remember being in the uh, green room before the show and people were telling me, you know, up until the time that we take the show, you know, I hope you're gonna be ready for all the orders that are gonna come in. And, you know, this is huge. And I remember looking at the pictures on the walls of, of her green room and seeing so many people that were customers of mine, like people that used the product. And I remember having this really calm feeling and I wasn't worried at all about how many people were gonna call and how many orders we were gonna get because I knew that I didn't do anything extra to put myself there. The universe put me there. Yes. I'm supposed to be here. So why would God put me in a situation for everything to fall apart? Why? It doesn't make any no, sense. No, not at all. It doesn't all. make any sense. And I just, I remember sitting there and my husband leaned over to me and he said, I'm so very proud of you right now. And I'm like, don't, not now, not now. I can't cry. I can't cry. You got to tell me later. Then I'm sitting there like, oh. <laughs> so that was the calm before the beautiful storm as it relates to things just blowing up with the business. Could you can quantify that if I can ask? It, it actually was a nice kind of blowing up. It wasn't insane it wasn't 
you know, um, too many orders for us to handle, but it was a steady flow of uh, acceptance and business. Um, it, you know, there were a lot of orders that first day on the website, but nothing that we couldn't handle. Yes. But it just kept building, you know. So People Magazine, they were talking about doing a piece on me, and when they found out that I had done her show, that solidified it. Um, the book deal that had been being shopped around got solidified yes. once I went on that show. Yes. Um, then it aired a second time, which gave us a chance to keep the website up and capture more of that business. So we first appeared on the show the end of June, then it re-aired in October. The People Magazine piece hit in November. So it was just this nice build to the end of that, that year. So the fourth quarter of 2003 was very, very good, but it was gradual. Understood. It wasn't like, boom, you know? Yeah. So that happened later when I did Tyra Banks in 2006. That was huge. Tell me, in just tell me one more day. about that. Uh, we uh, did the show. It was Mary J. Blige, Jada, and myself. And we made products on air. We gave people spa treatments on the show. It was amazing. It went off without a hitch. Yes. You know, from, for someone from television background, I knew how much we were trying to do in one hour and thought, please, God, let this work out. And it was phenomenal, and it was fun. Like, there was nothing forced about it. It was very, very fun. But we, I think we did a hundred and something thousand orders oh, in one incredible. day. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was, wow. that was boom. Yes. That was a big boom. But we were able to handle it. You know, the company had gotten to a different size at that point. The infrastructure was stronger. The website had more bandwidth, more customer service people on the phone. You know, so we could handle that, that flood. And it just, it changed where our web business was forever. You know, so it was a huge spike and then everything, the, the normal day to day doubled and just stayed there. So you start off with, at one point in debt, you start out the business off with like $100. Mm -hmm. And now you're talking multi-million dollar mm -hmm. business running. Can, yes. you, can you tell me how many millions of dollars you're talking about here in terms of the estimation of your business today? <laughs> well, last year's sales were uh, over 30 million. We were about $32 million. Um, value and all that kind of stuff, that's not, that's not my area. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It, it is. It's amazing. And because it takes so much work to do it, it's very humbling. You know, and I, I always have to remind people, the company made $32 million. I didn't get to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not my money. <laughs> but, um. But I, still, it's such an incredible Oh, no, it is. It is. I, I don't discount it. Well, it's just that people people think that, you know, you do the Oprah Winfrey show and you are now a millionaire just yes. like Oprah. Yes. And no. Um, but the, the work that goes into doing it makes you appreciate it so much more. Absolutely. Beauty is inherent in every single person. And when we put on makeup or we put on jewelry or we put on perfume, we're just enhancing what's already there. Maybe we're giving ourselves some confidence. Maybe we're creating a new character, becoming a new person. You know, we feel down today and we need to be confident. So we're gonna put on a confident fragrance and yes. a bold lipstick to help us feel better. But it doesn't make us more or less beautiful. It just enhances what's already there. And if you can't feel it on the inside, it's never gonna show on the outside. There's power in really understanding who we are. And it's beautiful how we grow through adversity and the challenges that pursuing something so much bigger than ourselves present. As Lisa Price tackled each problem, big and small, that Building Carol's Daughter as a brand presented, her confidence grew, it soared. Her business excelled. In time, she met her husband and business partner, began a family, and grew Carol's daughter to the successful business that it is today. So much so that she garnered the support of an enviable investor team that includes Jay-Z, Mary J. Blige, Will, and Jada Pinkett Smith, just to name a few. So if you could have a quick conversation with that young woman that was in her kitchen, testing and trying uh, concoctions, mm -hmm. what, would you, what would you say to her? What piece of advice do you think she would need to hear then based on what you know now? I think I would say trust your gut. Trust your gut, trust yourself, don't second guess yourself. Because 
I've second guessed and wasted time. Yeah. Um, or just didn't trust my gut and it, you know, it just didn't work out well. And, and I had extra angst to deal with. And I think that would be a safe thing to say where I'm not revealing too much, but giving her the key information that she really needs to, to get through it. Mm -hmm. So um, you've evolved as an individual, as a business, as Carol's daughter, the product. What does that evolution like look like today as far as the, the, the brand is concerned? What can we be excited about as women? What have you created that uh, today's woman can look forward to? Well, we have a new launch that, that just started launching yesterday. It launched on our websites yesterday and um, in Sephora, and it launches in our store in another week. And it is a hair care regimen built around the raw material Minoy. Mm -hmm. It's a repairing collection. It makes your hair feel fantastic, um, softens it, makes it stronger and longer smells amazing and you know people use it and they have to like sit down for a moment and collect themselves <laughs> it just feels I have so to try great. some yes, of that you have to try it so Lisa I hear that your scar butter does miracles is that <laughs> fact or fiction <laughs> well uh, the anecdotal information that we've gotten on it is that people just have great results with it it's amazing how it helps the skin heal you know, you, I've had, you know, C-sections and different minor procedures, and I love when a doctor says, wow, what are you rubbing on this? It, it, it's, it's healing so well. What is that? Is yeah. it vitamin E? And I'm like, no, it's scar butter. I make it. And I know something's really hot right now. Yes, this is our Minoy Repairing Collection. It features a shampoo, a conditioner, and a wonderful mask and it's made with coconut oil and tiare flowers. And tiare flowers are like gardenia flowers. They're sacred in Tahiti. Minoy is a sacred oil, and it is amazing for the hair and skin, protecting it from harsh elements. And what our clinical tests have shown is one use of the mask with the shampoo reduces breakage by 96%. Wow. And your hair grows 13 times longer than it would without using it. Um, what about for someone that has just five minutes or so for me time and wants to take a luxurious, relaxing bath or shower? Do you have something that would work for that? Well, we actually have two new fragrances. The Goddess Flower is our newest floral, and that is a great jasmine and vanilla and sheer musk blend. You can use the cleansing cream in the shower to wash your body with it. You can also pour it into the bath to make a foaming bath. A wonderful dry oil mist that will perfume your entire body, but moisturizes you at the same time with acai berry extract and coconut oils and then we have a citrus scent which is our orange ambrosia which features a blood orange oil from capri that is just beautiful now what i love about your product is you're not just doing uh, the body good and the soul good but you're actually helping others talk to me a little bit about your product that's geared towards uh, uh, making a difference for others well this is the i am power souffle and i am power is a slogan from Mary J. Blige's foundation, FAWN, which stands, up, stands for the Foundation for the Advancement of Women Now. When you purchase I'm Power, you're giving back because all of the proceeds from the I Am Power souffle go back to benefit FAWN. And we just celebrated last night Mary being able to send 35 more women to college on a four-year scholarship. All of that is coming from this wonderful I Am Power souffle. There are more reasons than just beauty to purchase Carol's Daughter. And so I would encourage you to go to www.carolsdaughter.com right now to see what you can invest in. This is an investment and a worthwhile investment in yourself and in others. So there's a lot of women watching this show right now that have an idea, have something that they're really passionate about, uh, but may not necessarily have, have the opportunity to sit in front of an Oprah and to talk about it, or uh, have the uh, incredible um, investor backing that you have. You have Mary J. Blige and Jada Pinkett and Will Smith and uh, Jay-Z and others that were smart business partners mm -hmm. with you. Uh, what advice would you give to women like that, that have a dream but don't even know where to begin? Well. First off, it, it don't compare yourself to someone else. You know, don't don't look at someone like me or someone else that you look at who's in business and think that you need to have the same things in place in order to have success. 
because we all have different paths for different reasons. And I believe that my path has put me in a position where I can tell other people that they can achieve their goals and they can achieve their dreams. And everybody's dreams are different sizes. I could still be a very successful person with a much smaller um, business. You know, yes. I, I could make $2 million in a year and be really successful, just not as many people know about me. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Um, you know, as long as you're doing what you're passionate about, you can pay your bills, you can pay your employees, you can manage what success looks like to you. Learning as much as possible about your field is helpful because sometimes when you just see what other people are doing in your industry and see what you can do that makes you makes you different. What do you bring to the equation that makes you unique? What is it about your brand that makes your event planning business different from someone else's business? And latching on to that, holding on to it, and no matter how you grow, keeping that authentic. And that, that was really important to me. And it was something that I didn't even realize how critical it was until I was kind of in the thick of it, you know? And, and then you realize, well, wait a minute, this is what we do that other people don't do. And we have to remain true to that and be authentic and be who we are. You know, and you take something like Carol's daughter and what we've done within the, the whole company is have people identify themselves as whose child they are. So if you get an email from someone else in the company, it's gonna say Lauren Branch, Joyce's daughter. Oh, I love that. You know, so I love that. that's not something that you think about no. when you first come up with the name, but yeah. you figure out, okay, I've gone from it being a family business to having 80 employees. How do I create that family environment? Absolutely. We're all someone's child. That's something that we all have in common. We're all someone's son or daughter. And how do we resonate that and carry it through as a brand message? So those things that, those little nuggets that you can find mm. that make your business unique, are the things that turn you into a brand and differentiate you from everyone else. How, how do you balance the work and the life, mm -hmm. you know, your family and life? Because that's, I think, a really challenging thing. And I, I know a lot of women out there just can't figure that out. I know I struggle with it. Yeah. Um, first, you have to think <laughs> like a man because we never ask a man, how do you juggle being a dad and being a CEO, we just, we don't ask men that question. So don't ask it of yourself. You can't balance it all. So there's gonna be days when you do your mom job really, really well. And there'll be days when you do your entrepreneur job really, really well, and you'll suck at being a mom. And then there's gonna be a few days here and there where you actually get them both right in yeah. the same day. Yeah. And you just feel good about those days, you know? I. With that, I'm still a work in progress because I'm a perfectionist and I want like the laundry done and the house clean and I want everything done. Yes. And I can't have it that way because I'll just run myself into the ground. So I don't punish myself sure. and I don't try to balance everything because I've learned that that's just a myth. The balance is a myth. Yes. What, what gets balanced is that, you know, your kids kind of understand why you do what you do. And I, I try to explain to them as much as possible what I'm doing, especially now that my boys are older. You know, I try to explain why I'm doing this and why I have to travel and why it can't be someone else. And because they're older, you know, and they, they've watched this grow and, and they've watched their mom change, they get it. I love that. And I think it's important to do that even with ourselves. Just keep reminding ourselves, putting mm -hmm. things into appropriate perspective, why I'm making this sacrifice, why mm -hmm. I'm doing things this way. Yeah. Keeps you going, keeps you, you, you don't, grounded. And you don't have another shot at it. No. You know, I'm a person who bakes, and I can't tell you how many times I have bought the brownies or bought the cookies or bought the cupcakes for whatever thing at school because did it really make sense to stay up and bake? No, that wasn't the just best Just because of I time. can or just because, Limited just, just to say, oh, I made it myself. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you have to let some of those things go and not try to be superwoman. So let me ask you another question. What about you time? Because I, you know, as this incredibly successful and dedicated entrepreneur, mother, you know, family person, you're giving to your family, you're giving to your business, you're giving to the community. Mm -hmm. But what about you? How do you make yeah, time for yourself? I don't. I don't do that as much as I should. Um, but I'm. I'm fortunate that. I'm, I'm, I'm easy to, to please. I'm not very, very picky. I'm not too high maintenance. So 
I enjoy um, like me time sometimes will come from a business trip. I'll be on a business trip and I'll have work to do during the day. But then when the day is over and I come home to my hotel, yes. I don't have to do dishes. I don't have to make dinner. I don't have to do homework. And I'll order a movie in my hotel room and just relax. That is really special because when I'm home, I have my day job at work during the day and I have my night job when I come home. So when I travel on a business trip, sometimes it's more relaxing. Um, and then every now and then I'll buy myself a cool purse because I love purses. <laughs> You're talking to the person <laughs> shoe addict, so I totally get it. I just bought a purse when I was at DC on Friday. Isn't it incredible how, what that makes you oh, feel? Yeah. Like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> There's a lot of wisdom to be gleaned from this extraordinary woman's journey. She found it within herself to bring a wild dream to life. With a sensitive ear to her inner truth and by tapping into and cultivating her gift, Lisa Price is living the American dream and very practically and beautifully making a difference in the lives of multitudes. Lisa's incredible story is about innate talent, hard work and determination and how they meet opportunity. We can all learn from her. She's living proof that finding that thing that you're good at and excelling at it is the recipe to fulfillment and success. While the country was going through the last you know, economic crisis that we're still coming out of, um, it was difficult within the business, not because we were suffering in the same way financially, but because we had plans of things that we were going to do and it's interesting because it was it was difficult but we were still so blessed compared to so many other businesses because we had growth yes. you know during a time when you know money was just insane what do you think about what do you think about the product we allowed for that well i i think beauty inherently is somewhat recession proof um a woman will splurge on a fragrance or a lipstick much quicker than she will on a luxury no, purse or a right. car. You're right about you know? that. I, I mean, even even myself, I, I love purses and I stop buying them, you know, but I didn't stop buying perfume. <laughs> <laughs> even though I make perfume, uh, I would still treat myself to a bottle of perfume every now and then. Um, you know, so there's, there's some things that are recession proof in, you know, in that regard. And then you know, when you deliver a product that works and someone feels like they need it, especially for their hair, yes. you know, I mean, there's a lot that we're going to give up, but we're not going to walk out with our hair. No, we're the not. Mess. <laughs> we're going to figure it out. <laughs>30-something again, <laughs> you know, like you want to go back to 30-something with, you know, this, this, uh, this wisdom. So, um, I look forward to having time to exercise. I like exercising and I don't always have the time to do it when I, when I want to. So I fantasize about working out six days a week for like a month and just seeing what am I going to look like and feel like yeah. after that month. Um, 
I fantasize about being able to go to the movies and not have a toy affiliated with the film. <laughs> Just see an adult uh, movie because you know having a four-year-old it gets it gets a little difficult. Um, and being able to travel and um, hoping that I can handle you know my kids going off to college because you know for, for so long I felt like they were all so little and now Forrest is 15 and he's getting ready to go into the 10th grade and you know college is not that far away and I actually have to let him leave yeah like what how are you gonna do that yeah you know like he's you this, can do it he's this big tall <laughs> you know man looking person but he's still my little baby so it's it's interesting but it's it's good it's a good place to be and I feel like I've learned so much and and I'm so much better prepared for things than I used to be I still have more to learn but I feel a lot stronger than I did before I've said it before and I'll say it again we can do anything we put our minds to nothing is impossible when you have a dream the courage to take it on by the horns and a measure of grace to carry you through Carol's Daughters products are available at Lisa's stores in Brooklyn and Harlem, as well as through a variety of retail outlets such as Macy's, Sephora, and Dillard's. I've fallen in love with the Minoy collection. It's doing wonders for my natural hair. Pick up your Carol's Daughter products today and join the cult following that includes Victoria's Secret models, Selita E. Banks, and singers Solange Knowles and Casey, as we celebrate and care for our natural beauty. You can learn more by going to carolsdaughter.com. That's our show for today. If you haven't already, subscribe to mokami.tv right now. And keep it locked right here where your stories are inspiring, empowering, and transforming lives. You know I have to tell you about my shoe. Isn't that a hot shoe? <laughs> Look at the platform. It's got gold detail. Of course, it's a nice peep toe red which stands out with anything you wear, everything from formal to a fabulous pair of jeans and a hot looking, you know, top, makes an incredible ensemble. I wish I could tell you where I got these and how much I got them for you, you're just gonna have to guess. Anyway, I've got to put my shoe on. Mm -hmm.